So we are moving on to the next mission in the Raiders of the North Sea campaign game, Rescue. And we hope you'll join us for this playthrough here today on Legendary Tactics. So this uh, game isn't too dramatically different from an, a normal game of uh, Raiders of the North Sea. Um, there's been some townsfolk that have been kidnapped. And what that means is each time you raid, you rescue a townsfolk and get a card. The gatehouse is less effective and uh, you can, uh, it's added a few new abilities to the gatekeeper and uh, AI opponents also start with extra armor and gold. We also get this uh, brawler uh, guy who's actually, once per raid, you get to reroll a die, which is actually pretty powerful. Um, and he has two combat strength, which is not too bad. Um, very uh, affordable and useful um, character and probably in many ways a little bit overpowered um, so I'm definitely going to hang on to uh, uh, to that I'm looking to build up my combat strength um, as quickly as possible the nice thing is knowing that once you complete a raid you will actually get another card uh, in your hand so um, it's even more important to raid um, and and uh, as quickly as possible now the the early game in this um, i find is typically a race to get uh, the requirements for uh, the uh, for rating um, and to grab one of those low cost um, but reasonably high value spots uh, with the um, dark silver totem um, so it's a bit of a race just to see who gets there first and in reality probably you know, most games they're kind of evenly split uh, between between them. Kind of everyone gets one, and then everyone else has to weigh whether they want to hit a Valkyrie in order to get the uh, the bonus or whatever. There's some that are just, to my mind, not worth the trade off whatsoever. I mean, if you're only getting one cattle and it's going to cost you a crew member, unless you got some sort of bonus that. Uh, that pays out or something like that i just or sorry there's sorry it's one stone and one cattle for example really i don't know if that's worth it because just the time to get that crew member back all the higher level missions require additional crew members so even though there's um, obviously uh, some victory points involved i think you're much better off conserving your crew as much as possible um, some of these uh, campaign missions are kind of have bonuses for hitting Valkyries and so forth, but I don't know. It, to me, it's uh, it takes so much time to hire a decent crew and to get a, a decent crew up and running, um, both in time and resources, and it's just not worth it. So in general, my goal is to um, hit as many of the uh, the uh, targets as possible um, and uh, the way that you do that what you want to focus on essentially are provisions gold and crew members if you stockpile enough of that then you can do multiple raids maybe even back-to-back -back turns which is great um, there's lots of uh, great opportunities there um, if you've got the resources and uh, so I'm looking basically to race I'm trying to get to uh, there's that one with the double cattle the uh, the ore there and the uh, gold um, I would love to snag that one um, because I'm just one uh, one provision away and I may have kind of I may have kind of missed that um, opportunity I don't <clears throat> I don't think I did uh, miss it uh, because I was trying to focus on getting my crew uh, together and I need money for that from the silversmith etc so um, everyone's kind of racing for the uh, the first um, who can be the first to get to the uh, the raid there and so I'm gonna hopefully have a shot at it I got my crew members got my provisions um, but there's uh, it's a four player game so really um, anything uh, <laughs> anything goes uh, red doesn't uh, raid, uh, however, green does. Um, they pick the spot with a four uh, ore, which is kind of interesting. But that's fine. That wasn't a target of mine in particularly. Um, there is that one with the double gold, too. That one does look uh, pretty tempting. Um, but again, it's all about making sure you've got the right number of crew and all that stuff. Um, 
blue decides to snag that one, so that makes uh, my choice a bit easier <laughs> in terms of uh, which spot to, to raid. There's only one other spot without a Valkyrie. Um, <clears throat> then again, you can make a case um, for uh, you at the barracks hiring one of the really cheap uh, crew members just to sacrifice them to the Valkyrie when you hit them. Uh, again, time and resources. Uh, typically, it, it uh, costs to bring any new crew member on board, so I'm a bit reluctant to uh, to do that. But anyway, I'm I'm excited to kind of see if I can get to the next uh, to start raiding the the next level of uh, spots here. I'm kind of taking a look. I do need more provisions. There's no question. I do need really preferably. Uh, I do have the crew members, um, but it doesn't hurt to have the fourth uh, crew member. There's a tempting spot up by the monastery there um, with some good uh, rewards. Um, <clears throat> so it wouldn't hurt to have the fourth, and certainly that helps with any rolls for victory points regardless. So um, it's always a good thing. So far, I mean, it's such an early stage in the game. We're barely... You know into we barely got a you know one or two victory points each at this point but i saw the opportunity to uh to kind of trade in the cattle for the provisions and uh i the there were some options in the longhouse but they did cost gold and i'm not a fan of giving up gold i really want to hang on to that if i can for the later uh the later raids um, so that hopefully gave me a bit of a boost when it comes to the provisions. And if you think about it, I, it didn't do too badly for one turn to get four provisions. Um, now, um, my opponent there is going to attack that uh, one vulnerable spot and pick up a few victory points there. So blue does jump out ahead. However, um, I am still able to... Um, you know to uh, to do my thing here if I remember correctly um, I'm gonna just double check and see now I do need four crew members I did run into it this uh, this game where it just felt like I was kind of running into obstacles all the time um, and not able to kind of do what I wanted to do and in this case there was I had to play in the barracks to get my uh, my uh, hire to hire one of the townsfolk um, the problem was that um, the um, the totems that were available are all black totems, which means that it's going to be yet another turn before I can raid in the middle uh, realm there. So that was a bit frustrating. I thought about taking maybe some, uh, getting some gold. In the end, I decided to uh, to take up uh, to two silver from an opponent. Now in this game, it's a bit hard to tell. You have to just kind of pick without being able to see how many they have. So fortunately, I chose blue and they happened to have two silver. Um, I chose blue maze basically because they were highest in victory points. So there goes another potentially great spot. And uh, my opponent has some pretty decent strength and pulls off uh, a, a four victory point uh, move there. It's actually the first thing red has actually really done. I don't know what green is up to, um, but arguably you may say the same thing about my uh, turn as well. <laughs> so, um, but I've got big plans. Uh, so <clears throat> I've got a, de a decent amount of strength. I mean, obviously it's not ideal, um, but I'm going to have to kind of keep an eye out for the the right totem. I need to have uh, the the right totem, and I don't really have a lot of options here um, in terms of the, the the totem that I'm gonna grab so I'm gonna essentially trade in some some uh, some more there for some armor um, mainly just to grab the totem it's not something I necessarily would have wanted to do but at least I'm all set up for my my raid next uh, next turn and my opponents seem to be just kind of spinning their wheels at this point as well so I'm happy to let them do that um, we're going to uh, uh, now so green took the black totem so no raids unless they're going to be the local raids uh, and same with blue so that bodes well uh, for uh, at least for the moment it seems like they will not be raiding next turn unless they want to take the uh, the hit so <clears throat> um, I'm looking again at my 
overall picture. I'd love to have some additional gold. Um, and uh, I'm going to actually take the gatehouse uh, and I'm going to hire one more crew. I'm gonna, I really want to get the, um, the extra power. And to have a fourth crew member is always good, uh, especially when you get into the higher levels where you need four or five. When you get into that realm at the far end, uh, the more crew members, the better. So I am going to be looking for uh, gold. I was fortunate in that I was able to grab, um, make everything work with the, uh, the barracks. Now, as it turns out, green does raid locally and with a five uh, person crew, um, they can easily take the hit for the, with the Valkyrie and probably actually made out okay. I mean, obviously, again, time and expense to time and resources to get uh, that crew member replaced, but you know, um, may not have been a bad move depending on uh, their situation. I'm talking about these AIs as though they're somewhat sentient, but I'm not sure. So anyway, finally I can uh, attack the monastery I've been after there. <clears throat> That's going to give me another gold, which is hopefully going to fuel more uh, raid opportunities here. And I've got decent strength and I roll 21. I'm like, well, you know what? No downside to re-rolling with uh, the brawler there. So I may as well re-roll one of the dice, see what happens. And I get to right there, that pays off in actual victory points. So that's a big deal. And then I've jumped ahead, I'm in the lead, I get another card, pretty decent. I, a bit more expensive than I can afford. Actually, they both are at the moment. Um, but what I'm hoping is uh, if I can grab some quick and easy um, uh, provisions, um, I can, there's a, the longhouse option is available as well. Uh, and uh, so I'm hoping that um, I can maybe grab uh, a, some provisions and head out right, right again. I've got the gold to do it. So um, there's some possibilities here. Just want to scan ahead and look. So these are calling for five, like it's probably better to have five crew members there's only really a handful of resources available, nothing really super exciting. Um, but re at the end of the day, that section is all about the victory points anyway. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried. Um, but I really could use another crew member. And uh, so it's one of those things where I kind of wish I could grab the silversmith totem now and then put <laughs> down a, a piece because it's, uh, it's a bit awkward because the mill is blocked and I don't have enough money to hire. I'd love to play in the barracks, just don't have the money and I can't play into the silversmith either. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, stuck a little bit. I suppose the treasury is always an option if, as long as I don't mind sacrificing a card. I'm not a big fan of giving up cards for short term things like that. So I'm going to sacrifice the expensive guy, gain an armor, um, which is never, really a bad thing and now do I want to take the money or do I want to take the provisions that is the question so I'm going to take the provisions um, and uh, I think that'll, that hopefully will prove to be wise I still ideally need um, to get some gold and hire this uh, old man here even though he doesn't have any combat strength um, it's the fifth crew member that I'm after and if I do decide to attack a spot with a Valkyrie, then at least I will, um, I will have the, the, um, I'll have someone I can sacrifice. Now, really, I would love it if my opponents had grabbed the Silversmith uh, totem, but it's just not going to happen. I'm kind of looking at what options there are in the mid uh, mid range. There is that one, the outpost with two gold, and that is fairly tempting. I do like that. Unfortunately, I will have to sacrifice um, one of my crew members, but I am going to regain a, um, a card here. I don't need to re-roll really here. I'm already well ahead. Um, I suppose I could have. It doesn't really matter uh, at this stage because I'm already well, well past the line. I'm going to get four victory points, so... Um, you know, and maybe just re-roll just for fun. Yep, we totally killed it. So 
Um, so that's good. So we, we got some gold. Now I do have to sacrifice uh, one of my uh, one of my guys. So I'm going to sacrifice um, the um, the warmonger. Um, again, it's a bit of a toss up, honestly. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, but I did did win the raid. I do get, unfortunately, a weaker card. It is one I can afford, though. So um, and actually the the ability of uh, that maiden is actually pretty good when it comes. The extra provisions are are very handy. Um, <clears throat> my opponent has already ramped up to five crew member strength now loses one due to the Valkyrie uh, but um, I'm in a bit of a bit of a challenge here once again the two spots that I, I I want the barracks and the silversmith are both both blocked but fortunately green takes up the silversmith we're gonna hope blue doesn't block it here um, because uh, I could certainly use the the uh, the the um, the silver and instead, I get, uh, unfortunately, beaten to the punch. Blue manages to steal that one sight that I was kind of eyeing up. Uh, so, <clears throat> although I, I guess just didn't attack with enough strength to really make a difference in victory points, I'm still ahead, um, but only by two. Um, green does appear to be kind of out of it. Um, and uh, obviously, red and blue are both uh, solidly in the game. I'm going to hire her. And I got some provisions. I would have preferred to do that in reverse order, but whatever. Um, we're probably going to have to um, just spend another turn getting some silver and hiring. I really, it would be great if silversmith and barracks were wide open so I could do my, my plan uh, here, <clears throat> or at least uh, silversmith anyway. So uh, green takes some, uh, some silver and hires uh, one of the townsfolk. Um, adds to their crew um, and blue is going to raid and I guess with the gravedigger uh, guy that that's obviously someone going to be sacrificed to the Valkyrie and rolls just enough to get six victory points and that's a bit of an issue um, as uh, blue um, pulls ahead and uh, then um, gets a replacement crew member um, by uh, doing the successful raid so um, <clears throat> so I would love to be able to hire a crew member but the barracks are blocked the silversmith or sorry the silversmiths brought blocked and the barracks um, I cannot uh, play into right yet because I don't have enough money to hire anyone so <clears throat> my um, my options are kind of stuck here I decided to do a little bit of a power play um, giving up the two uh, cattle there to um, and and uh, just get some some um, victory points there, and then take some silver to line up my my hiring, <clears throat> and uh, my opponents then uh, go and raid, and uh, I mean obviously there's some points there for victory points, uh, two cattle, but uh, loses. Uh, loses a, a crew member for that and again i don't know time and uh, time and resources lost there i don't know if that was totally worthwhile green is uh, is way behind um but uh surprises by raiding one of the best spots still available and with some reasonable strength a um, couple of mediocre rules though uh get it just seven uh, victory points there Obviously, higher rolls, much higher rolls are needed there. And blue is up next. And uh, blue then uh, <clears throat> hires uh, another townsfolk, building their crew, and draws from the longhouse and takes some victory points. So now blue is pulling ahead with 23. And uh, this is going to be a bit of... Uh, a bit of a challenge. I'm just trying to make sure I get everything right. I've got, I need a crew member. I need two more provisions. I have the gold I need and I can begin to, um, to, uh, to raid. So I get two provisions from the mill. Thank you to the, uh, the, um, maiden, the provisions maiden. And I hire this old sage 
Again, my combat, for having five crew, my combat of 11 is really, really pathetic. The only thing is the brawler is going to give me a reroll. That's the only kind of saving grace of this uh, motley crew here. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm all, I have the provisions I need, I have the crew I need, um, and I'm just uh, ready to, uh, to raid and get uh, some, some, hopefully some big time uh, victory points here. So... Um, and uh, some some material material rewards as well. I'm going to hit the fortress up here, and uh, again, not great uh, in terms of um, strength here, um, but uh, I I end up doing well enough. I don't need to re-roll. Um, no point in doing that. So I'll take the six victory points, and that uh, I pull ahead a little bit, and I get some cattle, and I get some uh, ore, and I get that guy. Um, which is a little bit out of my price range, but potentially could be a pretty decent replacement um, if, if I need to um, hit a spot with a Valkyrie. So, um, yeah, green is way behind just building up the armory and adding crew members. I don't know what that uh, AI is up to. Um, blue is obviously right behind me. Going to um, build up some silver and hire um, a, a, one of the townsfolk. Um, obviously, lots of provisions there, probably going to raid soon. So um, I, I saw an opportunity to snag five victory points here. And even though it cost me some gold, which obviously is valuable, um, I was able to, with my old sage, uh, end up trading in a couple of, uh, of ore for another four victory points. That put me at 33, and that's a pretty good spot to be um, at this uh, late stage of the game. Um, I'm pretty depleted though, <laughs> no question there. Um, it's going to be a while before I can um, s attack any of those um, higher uh, realmed, <laughs> higher higher victory point realms. And and it did cross my mind to see maybe what if I find other ways to get victory points sticking around a little bit closer to the home front, maybe uh, raiding uh, just the harbors right nearby <clears throat> maybe i can make a go of it and i don't need to build up to uh, raid uh the furthest uh, realm again especially as it seems like green is lining up like they got tons of provisions tons of everything um and interestingly blue raids the one of the close harbors now um obviously there's some great resources there and a victory point which doesn't really contribute much but um the cost of a crew member again but maybe they're the the resources in that case might offset it um i'm not sure uh have to uh, about their play but um at this point um i am just looking for provisions and um, the provisions maiden gives me an extra which is fabulous so i'm almost where i need to be now i do need to get some gold though and uh i do need to hire um, or I don't, sorry, I don't need to hire the, uh, the fifth crew member. I'd love to. I was kind of torn as to what exactly to do. The treasury didn't really impress. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll force all opponents to lose one silver. Not my favorite effect. Uh, it'll do the trick, I guess, but, uh, not necessarily going to disrupt their plans uh, too much um, now red is uh, kind of building up looks like uh, ready to go and green has been waiting for this finally gets the opportunity to raid and uh, with some decent strength um, manages to pull off a mid-tier victory at seven victory points and suddenly green is relevant again um, even though uh, having lost a, a crew member is a little bit uh depleted there um, <clears throat> so when we see um, blue looking to uh, build up some armor and grab some gold possibly for a hire and again I'm kind of looking local here and uh, I see that opportunity to grab some resources now these could be very useful uh, in the uh, both the um, longhouse and the um, having some gold to raid uh, one of the, the further 
uh, one of the realms further up there. So at the cost of the sage, which is actually kind of replaced uh, right away with that, with that successful raid. So getting that uh, additional townsfolk uh, in your hand uh, for ready for hiring after a raid is pretty good to offset uh, the impact of the Valkyrie. As long as you can afford who you've picked up, um, you can kind of get right back into the fray fairly quickly, which is great. Saves, a, saves an action, which is pretty valuable. Um, so there's a lot of kind of accumulation going on and I'm kind of looking at this. I, again, I need provisions. Um, I'm kind of looking at that play at the fortress. And the reason why I'm looking for it, even though it's just two Valkyrie, it is a, a bit of a power play, um, because it's victory points, uh, Primarily, it's essentially it's just the opportunity to score some victory points. Again, I don't have great strength, um, but I do have um, I do have that reroll, the brawler's reroll, so that can potentially save my bacon. Um, <clears throat> so red picks up uh, six victory points here, and once again is back in the game. Um, my position is, I wouldn't say it's really under threat at the moment i mean i'm a fair number up i mean obviously if there's a a massive raid that uh, one of them will pull off then they could come uh within uh, reasonably close range but i'm gonna see if i can just i'm holding my breath here to see whether um any of the uh, the others are going to raid doesn't seem like that's uh, gonna happen although blue is stocking up so um, it seems like the time to strike is uh, is now. And then I realize, oh my gosh, I've got the wrong totem. I can't actually attack the fortress because I've got the wrong totem. So now I'm looking at the board. I'm like, okay, gatehouse is the only spot I can go. <clears throat> you know, what do I need? Um, not a ton. And so I glance. I've got I've got the crew. I need. I've got the gold. I've got the provisions, I just need that darn totem. So in the end, I'm just gonna play this. It honestly, it probably doesn't matter much where I play it. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna just, you know, play it to, I was torn between the silversmith and the mill. As I said, it doesn't really matter, but probably silversmith is better because it does allow me to hire uh, a crew member if needed. Um, although I don't know if this at this stage it matters much um, But I have my totem and now I'm just holding my breath yeah, Red uh, obviously doesn't raid which is uh, which is fine by me green Has money gold and provisions. I don't have a view of their crew um, But they since they go to the gatehouse and hire this guy I'm guessing that they didn't have enough to pull off the raid right now and now it's blue and blue has Everything they need, um, interestingly, goes to the armory and grabs, uh, and then the gatehouse to grab a, uh, a new townsfolk, which gives me a wide open play. Again, this is a pure victory point play and, and, a, and a play to force the end of the game, basically. So we're going to get to one more round after, out of this. My strength is pretty pathetic. I roll a, t a 23. I'm not going to reroll any of those die. I'll gladly take the lowest tier victory it puts me at 41 um, I do have to sacrifice a couple of uh, of crew crew members and uh, that's okay because that's my last rate of the game um, essentially I am eyeing up that longhouse um, four point uh, uh, banner there <clears throat> um, red decides oddly to raid um, I don't see how this helps uh, really. I guess it's a couple of victory points, um, but doesn't really one for the gold and so forth. But um, but anyway, gained some some victory points there somehow. I ended up at 34, so still ways back. Um, green um, is going to actually raid that last spot um, again. Pure victory point play. The strength is good. Um, it's going to be at least a mid-tier, and uh, it's a mid-tier victory. And uh, suddenly, green is uh, in second, uh, second, pl or second place here, and blue suddenly not that relevant, and just looking to just kind of grab some provisions and grab some silver. Nothing really that stunning, and I'm eyeing up that longhouse. 
um, that uh, that banner. I've got um, really I've got the you know there's two options there, but I'm going to go with obviously the one that gives me the extra um, victory point, and uh, that puts me at 48. I'm well in control. Doesn't really matter what I grab here, except looking at the mill. I'm like, well, there's one more victory point to be had, and that's to grab the gold. And we are all set, and we are the hero of the people. And this is a breakdown of the victory. I ended up being 10 ahead. It was actually a little bit closer than I kind of expected, although I never felt like the AIs were really much of a threat, except temporarily. I'll just scroll through the, um, the different uh, point breakdowns here. You can see green really didn't uh, do great in a lot of categories, but anyway, um, ended up pulling out uh, pulling it ahead, which was uh, which was great. It was a fun game. I hope you enjoyed watching it. We'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.